Okay, this is uh, part two. We're going to be looking at the next step. So again, if we look here, we have uh, done steps one, two, three. We solved all the reaction forces. We now have a C minus. Great. We're on now step five, method of joints. And uh, we're ready to do method of joints. So let's look at our first step in method of joints. We want to first create a free body diagram of each joint. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to erase all of your members right in the middle and then add arrowheads to those lines. So drew a little diagram of here of what's going on, but I'm going to do it right up above so you can see it. So I'm going to erase the middles of all of my members. And then I'm going to add arrowheads to each of these. And that was a three feet. Next step is I want to label uh, the members. So wherever I broke those, I want to call them, you know, A, B, B, C, whatever they are, etc. So let's put those in. So this one right here is going to be called A, B. This one is B, C, and this one is A, C. And right now we're assuming all these are in tension. Again, uh, just as a little side note, um, if I am looking at member B, C and I put BC in tension. So I'm pulling this way, these are the forces that BC is experiencing. And this is the joint here and the joint down here. According to Newton's third law, if we're pulling out on BC here, what is it doing to joint B? The member is pulling down in this direction. Same thing over here at uh, joint C, the member is going to pull up and in. So these forces are Newton's third law action reaction forces where I solve for this force, this is the exact same force in the opposite direction here. So these are equal and opposite forces. So this force BC is the same as the force here BC. Let's look at our next step. Pick a joint with the most knowns and the least number of unknowns. So if I look at my diagrams now, and here are my three joints, which joint is the easiest joint to start with? Um, okay, so I've heard A and C. I heard a B. B is the least, uh, the last one you want to go with. Okay, uh, it's got the most forces. You got forces at angles you have to contend with. Uh, between C and A, they both have one known and two unknowns. But this, uh, these are all at um, X and Ys. So A is usually the easiest to go here. Um, so I'm going to start with A. So let's go to the next one. Uh, redraw joints, the joints free body diagram. So I'm going to put like an A and then I'm going to draw its free body diagram. So down below, I'm going to start with joint A. Free body diagram for A. Here's the 50 pounds from AX. This right here is member AB and this is member AC. Next step. Break vectors at angles into x and y components. We don't have any that are at angles, so we can move on. Then we need to do the sum of the forces in the x and the sum of the forces in the y are equal to zero. So we set that up. Now, you can do this in two ways. I'm going to do it this way and then show you a different way to do it. What forces are in the x direction? 50 pounds, it's positive, good. So 50 pounds, which is positive, and AC, which is positive. So then AC equals a negative 50 pounds. So that negative tells us that my original assumption of AC being in tension is incorrect. So AC is actually in compression. So if we look here, uh, we're solving for the unknowns. If we get a negative sign, we're going to change our free body diagram. Uh, it's opposite from what we had. So if I had tension, it's now compression. And then I'm going to change the equation and change the signs in the equation. So first I'm going to change my free body diagram. So now this is in compression. So again, that member is pushing out on joint A because we're pushing in on it to compress it. Now, what direction is AC pointing? It should be negative, so I'm going to put a little negative sign here. 
and then that changes this to a positive and now the positive confirms that my compression is correct okay here's what I would have done at the beginning I would have looked at the beginning and said okay it's impossible to have two forces pointing in the same direction so AC has to be flipped I would have flipped it at the very beginning made a little note that this is going to be in compression and then solve this and not worried about my having to switch my signs and my diagram so you don't have to do it wrong if you can if you understand how to do it right yes okay um, how about in the y direction what force do we have in the y and that's it it's zero pounds what that's telling me is that AB is not a load bearing member if we're assuming that all the members are weightless then AB is not actually holding or carrying any of the 50 pound load that's placed on this truss. So when I'm designing, I can reduce the size of that, of that component because, or that member, because it is not load bearing. Correct. Yep. Cost of material and um, weight of the structure as well, just to be more efficient. Exactly. Um, so let's look and see what we did here. Um, we've done that. We solved for unknowns. Uh, we're going to persevere and we're going to go back and we're going to pick another joint. Um, so now we're going to go with C uh, because again I'm going to stay away from B if I can. Um, I'm going to go to C now. So I'm going to redraw C. So we get right next to it. Oh, one thing we didn't do. We changed this free body diagram to compression. We've got to change our overall one up here. So that's going to affect us if we don't do that. So I'm going to change this. And I also have to change this vector here. It's got to be pointing away from AC. And if I didn't do that, it would have affected um, my work over here. So this one is pointing this direction. I've got the downward force. And I have up at an angle. This is BC. This is AC and this is 50 pounds. And we actually already solved for AC, it was right over here, it's 50 pounds. So I could put in 50 pounds right there. Again, same thing. Um, looking back at my spot, I redrew the joints free body diagram. I'm now gonna break my uh, vectors at angles into X and Y components. So I have a vector at an angle. Again, I'm going to use the angle that I measured earlier. I show components as dotted or dashed lines so you can see that they're they're not different than this vector it's just that those two combined make that vector we call this BCY and BCX uh, some people I've seen they've actually taken this vector and erased it and put in these vectors instead um, that's perfectly acceptable as well if you want to do that um, I don't I just leave it looking like that same two equations, some of the forces in the x equals zero, some of the forces in the y equals zero. So that was my next step. Solve for the unknowns. So let's, let's figure out what we have in the x. Uh, you can do either one because we only have one unknown at this point. Our only unknown at this point is BC. And you can either solve BC by solving BCX or you could solve for BC using BCY. Either way, you could, you could do that. Uh, I'm just going to go to the X just because it's, it's the first column. Uh, I have a AC that's positive, so I have a positive 50 pounds from AC, and then I have a negative BCX. Again, I've kind of analyzed this. This is a downward force. This is um, pointing to the right, so this one has to be an upward force and pointing to the left. If I had seen that these were kind of opposite, I might have to reverse this ahead of time, but again, based on these two that I know, this is correct equals zero so BCX equals 50 pounds okay great so we know the component and we know the angle so from a side and an angle we can find the hypotenuse and earlier um, we've already decided that the X component of a force is the force times the cosine of theta and the Y component of a force is the force times the sine of theta we've already derived those that's only when the angle um, is measured to the horizontal axis, to the x-axis. 
So this one right here, this angle is measured to the x-axis, so we can use this. So the force, which is BC, so the x component of BC, which is what we have, is equal to this right here, BC cosine theta. So I substitute. So instead of BCx, I put in BC cosine theta. Boom. Solve for BC. 50 pounds divided by the cosine of 45 degrees. BC is 70.7 .7 pounds. It's positive, so it is in tension. We could do the exact same thing in the Y. You're going to get the exact same value for BC. Uh, to confirm that that's correct, uh, you could do that, but I don't require it of my students um, to do. Uh, then if you look, we have solved for our three member forces. We've solved for our three reaction forces. We can then check our work on MD solids uh, to confirm that what we've done uh, via hand calculation is, is correct. So that's how you solve uh, for a truss. So we've uh, persevered. Uh, we've, we have no more unknowns, so we are now done. And you have A-plus work. It's nice and organized and neat. As a teacher, I can only hope that your work looks as nice for me to grade. <laughs>